In today's video, we're going to build this. There are several ways that we can implement themes. Generally, these only choose between light and dark mode, but any color scheme could be a choice. In the next several videos, I'm going to show you different ways that you can accomplish this. There will also be some extra cool things thrown in throughout each video, so be sure to watch to the end. The example that we'll build today is probably the easiest way to implement a mode picker. A link to the code will be in the description below. If this video helps you out, help me out by liking the video and subscribing for more videos like this. Let's get started. We're going to use CodePen and we'll start with the HTML. So we'll have an input first. And this is going to be a type of checkbox. And then we'll have a class on here. That's going to be checkbox. And then an ID of check. All right. And then next, we're going to have a div uh, with the class of content. And within that, we'll have a label with the class of label. And that's going to be for check. And within the label, we're going to use font awesome. So we'll have an I with the class of FAB and the class of FA Galactic Republic. And after that, another I, the class of FAB.FA-Rubble. And then after that, we're going to have a div with the class of ball. After the label, we'll have a span with the class of image. Within that, we'll have the same icons. So let's copy these and we'll put those there. And that is it for the HTML. Super simple. All right, so I said we're going to be using Font Awesome. So let's put that in. So we'll go here to CSS and we'll add that right here. So this is the Font Awesome CDN. Save and close. And there we go. We've got our checkbox and we've got our icons. So now it's time to get on to the styling. We're going to use some custom properties. So I'm just going to paste those in here. Uh, we're going to have a white color, a light gray, black, dark gray. And we're going to have a custom property of BG for background. And that's going to initially be set to our white variable. And then we'll have a variable for our text color. Initially, it's going to be our black color. And then we're going to keep track of dark opacity and light opacity. And we'll get to that in a minute. All right, we're going to have some standard resets here. Set the margin to 0, padding to 0, and box sizing. We'll set that to border box. All right, now let's style our content. We had a content class. Within that, we're going to set our background color. And that's going to equal our variable of BG for background. And then our text color is going to be our variable of text. Right. Then we're going to display this as flex, align items, want to be center, justify content is center, minimum height is going to be 100 VH. And that is just going to center everything into the middle of our page just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, you wouldn't want to do this normally. And then we're going to be transitioning the background color. So let's go ahead and add a transition there. So we have a nice uh, transition effect. That's going to be on the background and 0.3 seconds. And we'll just set an ease. And we have our checkbox here. And of course, we want to get rid of the checkbox. Before I do that, I want to show you why we laid this out in the way that we did. We want the checkbox to be first so that we can use CSS selectors to select everything after the checkbox. So we can check to see if the box is checked in CSS. And we're going to hide this checkbox, so we're not going to be able to click on it. And so this is why we have our label here. And for check, with the ID here of check, that links the two. So now if we click on the label, the checkbox is actually going to check. So within this label, we have these two icons. So if I click on either of these two icons, the checkbox should check. There we go. So that's how we're going to do that. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of that checkbox. So that was had a class of checkbox. And we're just going to say display none. And that'll be gone. All right, let's move on to our label section. That was label. We're going to display these as flex. And we're going to align items, center. And then we're going to justify content space between. And you'll see why we're doing that in just a minute. We're going to set a position on this of relative. And that's because we're going to absolutely position our check ball that is going to move back and forth. All right, we'll set the background on this to our variable of text. We'll set a border radius. We'll set that a uh, five rim. Set a padding on here of 0.5 rim. Height is going to be 2.5 rim. Width is going to be five rim. We'll set the font size to 1.5 rim. We'll set the cursor to pointer so that when we hover over it, we get the pointer cursor and the Z index of one because I want it to always be on top of everything else. And lastly, we're going to have a transition on the background. So let's go ahead and set that up. Background of 0 0.5 seconds and ease. All right now everything is black. We can't see anything. So let's move on to our ball. That's going to be the little toggle switch that's going to Start out on the left side, and when we check it, it's going to move to the right. So that was within our label. We'll set a position on this of absolute. Remember, we, we relatively positioned the label so that we can absolutely position the ball within it. it makes it easy. All right, we're going to set a top on here of 0 0.25 rim, a left of 0 0.25 rim. Height is going to be 2 rem. Width is going to be 2 rem. Now let's go ahead and set our color so we can see it. So we'll say background, and that's going to be a variable of our PG. There we go. Now we can see it. So let's go ahead and set the border radius. And that's going to be 50% to make it a circle. Nice. Now we're going to set a transform and a translate X. We're going to set it to zero, which is what it is initially, but we're going to set that because we're going to have a transition on it. Transition on the transform, 0 0.3 seconds, ease, and we're going to have another transition on the background, uh, 0 0.5 seconds, and ease. All right, and then we had these two icons within here, so we need to change the colors on those so that we can see them. So it was FA Galactic Republic. We're going to set the color on that to the variable of black. And then the FA rebel is going to be the variable of white. There we go. All right, now we're going to move on to our image, which is going to eventually be in the back of our toggle switch. And that's going to be these two icons that are off to the right here. So let's look at our HTML one more time. We had this image span, and within it, we have our two icons. This image span is really like a wrapper. So let's start out with that image. We're going to position this absolute. So that's going to pull it out of the document flow. And we're going to set the top at zero, left at zero. Width is going to be 100%. And height is going to be 100%. We're going to display flex. 
and align items, center, and justify content, center. And that's going to make them right here in the middle, right? So now we have the image and then the dot .fab. So by using fab, we're selecting both of these at the same time. So any shared styles can go under fab. So both of these icons are going to be positioned absolute. And both of them will have a font size of a clamp. So we're going to use this cool clamp feature and I'll explain it in a minute. Basically it's like a min max. And then we're going to have a transition on this, on the opacity, 0 0.3 seconds, ease in out. And actually we're gonna have a 0 0.5 second delay on that. And then each image has some things that differ. So we have to select them individually. So we'll say image and then dot FA dash galactic uh, republic. The color is going to change on each of them. So this one's going to have the variable of dark gray. And the opacity is going to be the variable of dark opacity. So that's that variable that we set. We're going to keep track of it. And you see that it disappeared because initially the dark opacity is set to zero. All right, so then we have our image and then our FA-rebel. The color on that one is going to be our variable of light gray. Nice, okay, and then our opacity on that one is going to be our variable of light opacity. All right, so these are all of the main styles. Now we need to figure out what's going to change when we check this box. So when I click on there, it's changing, but nothing's happening because we don't have anything else going on here that's tracking the change. So that's what we'll do next. So we're gonna target our checkbox and then checked. So if it's checked, we want to use the plus, which is a sibling selector. So we're going to say plus dot content. So if we look back here, our checkbox is here. Plus symbol means that we're selecting the next sibling, which is dot content and not a child. So this is the sibling dot content. Now within the content class, we want to select our label and the ball. Now on the ball, we want to transform and translate X 2.5 rim. Now when we click on it, it should move to the right. There we go. And click on it again, it'll move back to the left. Perfect. Next, we'll change the rest of our variables that we're keeping track of. So we'll say checkbox checked plus content. And then instead of typing all of these, I'm going to paste them in. So we're going to change our background to be our variable of black. So if it's checked, we're assuming that checked means it's the dark mode. So we're changing our background to black, our text color to white, our dark opacity will be one and our light opacity will be zero. And this is going to work because all of our content is inside of the content class. Let's look back here. This div of content is wrapping everything that we are trying to manipulate. If any of these items were outside of content, then this would not work. Now when we click it, it should move to the right and all of the colors and opacities and everything that we set should all change as well. And they should all have nice transitions. Perfect. Remember I had that 0.5 second delay on the opacity change of the image. I thought that was cool. It kind of fades out after the change happens. And then let's look at this clamp. The first property is your minimum value. So again, we're looking at the image. So this is the background image that's behind the checkbox. At the minimum, we want it to be 10 rim. At the maximum, we want it to be 80 VH, so viewport height. And then in the middle, which is the ideal size, 80 VW, which is viewport width. So because we have this set in this manner, 
this is responsive. So if I make it smaller, it will go down to 10 rem and it will stop. So that's the smallest it will get is 10 rem. And then as I move up, it likes to stay at 80 VW, but once I hit 80 VH, it's going to stop. So it will never go higher than the viewport height. That's a nice, cool new feature that I started using recently, and I'm going to be using it a lot more in the future. So that's going to be it for this video. And remember that I'm going to have three more videos that will show you alternate methods to implement theming. And look out for those very soon. Like this video to help me out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.